Now on BBC Two, he's been making the headlines this week and whatever your view, BBC Three was keen to find out more about Kilroy. And this was the result. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Robert Kilroy Silk was the king of daytime TV. Accused of racism, the BBC axed his show. Now, as quickly as he disappeared, he's back in the limelight as one of Britain's most controversial politicians. Change the face of British politics forever. Like him or loathe him, he's difficult to ignore. He's promising a new kind of politics and campaigning to get Britain out of Europe. We're going to stand up for Britain. Yeah! We want our country back. I used to work for him on Kilroy, but now I'm the one asking the questions. It's going to be a rocky ride. Could you sit down and be quiet? Don't listen at the door, knock away. Bum, bum, bum. Why are you asking that question? Fuck off. That is impertinent. Yeah. Good. Has he left the party or is I he don't know. Growing? I really don't know. Because <laughs> he hasn't told me. <laughs> I'm on my way to my first private meeting with Robert at his villa in southern Spain. Everything has been organized by his wife, Jan. Her instructions were simple. Get off at the bend by the cafe and wait. I was nervous about meeting Jan. She doesn't trust the press and was dead against Kilroy making this film. Over the next few months, we'd be spending a lot of time together, so we needed to get on. Hello? Yeah. Come in, How are you? Very good. How are you? Good. you look I'm going to shake you with my left hand. That's quite all right. You're always a bit of an awkward <laughs> customer, aren't you? You had a good journey? Yeah, yeah. I did. I did. And you um, come to sunny, sunny Spain? Yep. It's very hot. Very hot. So this is where you get your tan from? No, <laughs> no. You know very well that I, I inhabit. That. I pay a lot the of money for that. The Sunday, <laughs> of course, I'd go. Now, would I want to spoil everybody's myths and perceptions about me? You know, they, how could they call me all the names they call me if I told marmalade them? The truth? Marmalade, marmalade man, tangerine man. No, no, no. Some bit, definitely some bit. Stop trying to make me look domestic. Is everybody who knows me, they'll say he's a fraud because he never does this. I'm only doing it because you're here. Stop. I'm really sorry, Bradley, but you're going to have to grow up. You must be the envy of most housewives in Britain. <gasps> oh, really? What, what's it like to be married to him? What's it like to be married to him? Really sure is this. You could have said I can't straight remember off. not being married to him, can I? 43 years. It's hard to remember. I was 17. It's great. We met at school and she chased after me because like all the women around school, she couldn't resist me. And uh, oh. after I'd gone out with all the really beautiful women oh, at school, I you. kind of thought, well, I kind of... <laughs> I'll try this one. She's the, <laughs> you were the you were about the last one, weren't you? Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> We're a team. We always have been a team since the day we first met, and um, we complement each other. She kind of reins me in when I get too over optimistic or confident. And what do I do for you? I don't know. <laughs> I've, been, I've, been, I've been blamed for some of the more uh, outrageous lines that have come out every now and again. But it was Kilroy who came under fire for the article, which appeared to call Arabs limb amputators and women repressors. Jan is still incensed that the police considered prosecuting him. I had this cloud hanging over your head that he was being pro going to be prosecuted for inciting racial hatred. And this is Britain now. And I think, what on earth is happening to my country when decent people like him, you know, are being attacked in this way? You actually apologised for the article in the end. I apologised for offence. But I, yeah. you know, but no, no, not for the article. I've never apologised for the article. I won't apologise for the article. What I said was true, and I maintain that, and I've never resigned from that position. What I we did apologise for, but still apologise for, was causing anybody unnecessary offence, because I didn't go out to offend people. 
In the years I worked for Kilroy, I never thought he was a racist, but his explanation puzzled me. He says the article was an edited version of an earlier piece criticizing Arab states for human rights abuses that had been reprinted in error. He says he was telling the truth, but the articles both contained factual errors. I wasn't going to challenge him now. We'd come back to it later. Look at it. Come on, boys. Two English Labradors, both speak Spanish fluently, extremely well integrated into Spanish life and society, but then you'd probably call them two xenophobes as well, I suppose. I've come to Strasbourg for Kilroy's first day as a Euro MP for the UK Independence Party. Kilroy is never far from controversy. When asked what he wanted to do in the Parliament, his answer was... Wreck it. <laughs> <laughs> Expose it. <coughs> for the waste, the corruption and the way it's eroding our independence and our sovereignty. He arrives on one of the biggest days in the European Union's history. Ten new states have joined. But the British press haven't just come to see a new era in European politics. They've come to see Kilroy wreck it. And so have I. Party, ...whose most prominent new MEP, Robert Kilroy Silk, has already pledged to wreck the European Parliament. Did we vote for this? Did we want this? Did we want all the buildings you see around you? Did you see them all in Brussels? Did we want to pay for all this? And we should have an amicable divorce, a civilised withdrawal from this institution. It's a massive building, Robert. How on earth are you going to knock it down? <laughs> the wrecking would begin straight away with a small rebellion over ID cards. Who is this guy? His name's, his name's Robert Kilroy Silk. His name's Robert Kilroy Silk. You've got a... What happens if you don't wear the badge? We always wear the badge. Yeah, I know, but what happens if you don't? We, like, we British like the rules. We want to see the bits of paper that says you have to. Yes, Where is it, it? Exists. Is it? it exists. Where are you from? <laughs> Germany. No, you can tell. <laughs> You're another one. You've got problems as well, haven't you? Really not, You've got really enormous problems. Really yes, you have. You should never have joined this place. Why is Germany increasing working hours? Why is it we're talking about reducing social security? Why is France doing the same? Why is Poland joined? Oh, you know, from the experience of 20th century. That's not the answer you're supposed to give. The answer I wanted you, say, you to say is you've joined so you can get richer. Mm, yes. yes, it's another story. Is that lovely to meet you? Yes, <laughs> why, Mr. Paul? Let's finish the discussion. Yes? The whole world's a killer, set, isn't it, Robert? <laughs> Politics isn't new to Kilroy. 20 years ago, he was a front bench Labour MP. Now, former friends from Westminster are Strasbourg high flyers. Quite a lot of people, very vehemently anti European with the Kinnets, but I think they've kind of uh, gone native or something. As Labour leader, Neil Kinnock was Kilroy's boss back in the old days. Now, he's vice president of the commission. Just know that it, it's quite, must be quite interesting walking in parliament again with Robert Kilroy. So. It's about the least interesting thing I've ever experienced. You really don't like him very much? No. You used to be friends, didn't you? A long time ago, and that's until he turned his back on difficulty and walked out. He made the decision to come here and wreck it. He has no respect for what the parliament does, so really I, I only have a, a very low opinion of him. What happened? No, it's OK. The fallout with the Kinnocks happened when Kilroy left the Labour Party in 1985. This followed battles he was having with Labour's hard left. Kilroy's now on a new political track, but his days of party infighting are far from over. That was clear from his body language as he listened to party leader Roger Knapman addressing the press. It's the UK Independence Party that is likely to stop any by-election in Hartlepool, however much Mr Mandelson may be wanting to ditch his constituents to get on the gravy train here in Brussels. And uh, with regard to the referendum in the north... And so this is what you get decided. While other MEPs demonstrated their contempt for the Parliament's voting system, Kilroy pointedly didn't join in. It's called the Independence and Democracy Group, so we're very happy with that name. But the press were more interested in what was to be the first in a series of gaffes from UKIP's spokesman on women's rights. No self-respecting small businessman with a brain in the right place would ever employ a lady of childbearing age. 
That isn't politically correct, is it? It's a fact of life. I know, because I run a business. Mr. Bloom later <laughs> joked I, I, I that could. women didn't um, clean behind the yeah, fridge yeah, enough. I, I, I won't go any further down the uh, household arrangements that you have. The UK Independence Party caused a storm of protest in the European Parliament Parliament Women's today. Rights Committee fired off an Nobody understands that it's a joke. Neanderthal and outrageous. Prompted disbelief and anger in equal measure. Outrageous. And all this within just hours of starting work there. You're uh, the most famous... Uh, Member of UKIP today, your moment of fame hasn't got you into too much trouble. No, hopefully not, but I haven't spoken to my wife yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> she, I haven't been able to contact her since last night. That is, I'm starting to get just a bit, a bit nervous about that. <laughs> Even far-right MEPs were appalled. Alessandra Mussolini, granddaughter of the late Italian dictator, was furious. Godfrey Bloom wouldn't know how to clean the fridge, nor is he really a politician. Sit down, Godfrey, wait for this. I'd just like to make a very short statement. I would like to make a short statement. It is my first visit here and I think it's disgraceful, disgraceful, that such an undemocratic procedure can happen when somebody can quote, misquote from the press with no prior uh, engagement with me at all. Mrs. Mussolini. Oh, Mrs. Mussolini. We just talked to her. Godfrey's taken a photo. Oh, really? Really, where, where are they? Are they coming out? He's, he's, he's having a drink with her now. In where? The, uh, he's asked, he wanted me to go with him. But we did agree to disagree in a perfectly amicable way, and I'm looking forward to working with her on whatever women's rights things come up in the next five years. Right. You're from Finland, you would. Yeah, you probably clean Finland, underneath yeah. the fridge too, don't you? I, I, I'd love to. <laughs> on the face of it, Kilroy appeared to enjoy the joke. Which way did you go? behind the fridge. Uh, yes, Have you cleaned behind the fridge? <laughs> No, you I have to clean underneath. No, no, no. Listen, I read something really unbelievable. Please. Despite the smiles, something told me that this wasn't the kind of press attention he wanted for the party. You've got to check with me before you say anything. You check with me before you fart. No, I don't. Too late. <laughs> Too late. Somebody yelled. Godfrey, Godfrey, not another word out of you. Have a safe trip. J just keep your jokes to three a day. I'll, tr I'll try to three a day. Yeah, Oh, Jan's here. Jan, he sends you his love. It was an exciting start to the campaign, but I don't think anybody realised how much events at the Parliament would spiral out of control. <laughs> the Kilroy Silks have come to Paris to take part in a TV debate. But before the programme, it's time to take in a bit of French culture. Napoleon is sitting on an eagle, dominating the world, above the world. Now, there you go. What did we just see in the museum? A sculpture of Napoleon sitting on an eagle, and what did it say? Napoleon dominating the world. Oh, really? Is that what it's about? But he didn't, did he? Or not for long. Do you think that accurately reflects French, French ambitions? European absolutely, ambitions. absolutely. You can see it all the way through the history of the European Union. This is a French venture. This is so France can prance around the world and be at the top tables and influence decisions and policy making in a way that it couldn't do as France. Now let's have some French coffee. <laughs> uh, in the shade, yeah. In the past, UKIP had been accused of scare tactics over Europe of suggesting that the EU was a conspiracy to create a communist superstate, I wanted to make sure that Kilroy wasn't making the same exaggerated claims. Has UKIP been inadvertently or deliberately responsible for any Euro What are you talking about? Basically, the reason why I was asking that question was just to get some sort of reassurance that your campaign wouldn't be indulging in any of that. I think you've got a nerve. Why are you asking me if I'm not going to tell lies? Why should you suggest that I would be in the business of telling lies? Why, 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 are you, why are you asking that question? That is impertinent. They've lied. They've created a huge edifice here that they want to call the United States of Europe when we were told it was just about free trade. 
They want political integration when we were told it's just about jobs and economics. They want a United States of Europe. They have built that edifice over 50 years on lies, and we're going to destroy it with the truth. We've got to go. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 I didn't mean to suggest to rely, by the way. Oh, so not, because it'll be boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Take care. See you. See you. Bye. Bye, Joe. Bye. I'd obviously touched on a raw nerve and needed to let things settle. I also knew that the programme he was appearing on would be challenging him on this further. It was an issue that we'd come back to later. It was time to go to the studio. But before the programme started, Kilroy bumped into a French journalist and former fan. I used to switch between you and Tricia. Tricia. <laughs> Why did you switch? You're not allowed to switch. Uh, it's quite uncommon to see people coming from on the left to be almost to the far right and, and between. Uh, 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 and between you see, this is, you're, la you're a lazy journalist too. It's what you've written in this uh, article in the Daily uh, Express. I mean, maybe you were misunderstood, I don't know, but uh, I've read yeah, yeah. the article, uh, it was a bit nasty. Even. The idea that the whole Arabic world is doing No, I didn't that. say that. I didn't yeah, say that. No, I didn't say that. Stage. It's not true. I think it's... No, it's no, hey, I've got to agree. Okay, it was nice to, to talk to you. Uh, and, uh, it was luck, nice uh, to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Saved by the bell. It was time for the recording to start. But he was soon put on the defensive again. Robert Kilroy, si bonsoir. Merci d'être venu sur ce plateau. The president of your party is Roger Clapman, I believe, and he stated, he was talking about Brussels, and he said it's a federal super state based on socialist and communist views. Does he really believe that, or is it just something he says in African speeches? It's not a federal, and it's certainly not communist, and I think it's important to make that point. Yeah, I think it is too. You clearly know who he is. Yeah, of course I know because I, I'm a foreign correspondent in the UK, so uh, I know uh, like you will say. We are not in favour of destroying the European part. Why would I want to do that? Of course no, I don't want to do that. I tried to, to contact him, but he, I understand that he has become a kind of uh, uh, media darling and it's quite difficult to, 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 to get uh, in contact with him. And uh, you still want to do a piece on him? That's not true saying that, because I deal with all the media. Yes, yeah, and of course and I try. And we talk to yeah, the you speak to me? The museum for say today, and I've seen Napoleon dominating the world. Is that what you want to do? That we don't want to do that. That's a cliche, I think. Want to do. And I'm not saying that, but oh. I, I, I think... The media darling, I thought you said. Yes. C'est les Français qui peignent pour le monde. Moi, ça ne me donne pas une dame. Because he is very contactable, because I dealt with all the press, and that is not true. OK, um, I don't know, but so at the end I couldn't speak to him and uh, I, sp I spoke to another person and that's it. <laughs> that is the story. <laughs> nothing, uh, I mean, uh, I have nothing else to say, to, to be honest. I mean, they seem to be a bit uh, nervous here. We have had a very satisfactory forum from the point of view of confrontation. Thank you. Thank you. Can we do it again? There was a myth there made by UKIP, which was done by the leader of your party, with relation to Europe being a communist state. Oh, it used to be. No, no, but it was, it was, no, that was a long time ago. And a, a large number of the parties, and there still are, uh, large communist parties represented in the European Parliament and in the parliaments of the member states. And at the original... At the beginning of the European Union, and what was then the common market, there was very much a big, there was a large communist input. But uh, not anymore. Oh, there's an input, but, but I don't, no, I, I, mean, the, I don't the see, the I don't see, no, I don't, it was, wrong, no, 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 it was no, a myth, wasn't it? No, no, you're being, you're kind of trying to retrieve something now that isn't really worthwhile pursuing. No, it isn't, honestly. It's, it's not an issue. When did he make that statement? I've no idea. This wouldn't be the last time I would see him appear uncomfortable defending the views of his party colleagues. I'm back in England. I'm on my way to see Kilroy at his home in Buckinghamshire. Savage him! <laughs> Savage him! <laughs> Lovely. You see the sun shining now, you've arrived. John, show me some embarrassing pictures of Robert. No, he doesn't he take embarrassing pictures. He always takes brilliant pictures. It's sickening, isn't it? Uh, no, it's my favourite picture of him. 
Um, this is Robert's father, Billy, and he was killed in action. Robert was about 18 months. I think I don't think I don't think his father actually saw him till he was about nine months old. This is John Kilroy. So this is these two are best friends. His stepfather. So he survived the war, uh, and he married Robert's mother when Robert was about four. So there's the Kilroy and there's the silk. Your life's changed quite a lot, hasn't it, over the past year? Oh God, yeah. What with the BBC? And a uh, few kids. It's exciting. Not boring. Not sitting at home with my knitting. Putting my feet up as a pensioner. Jan is no ordinary politician's wife. Always by her husband's side, she acts as political advisor, campaign manager, and still finds time to pick out his wardrobe. Jan, Jan, Jan! Can you sort out my shirt? I'm not allowed to pick my own shirt and tie. Shirt I might be able to pick. I'm not allowed to choose the tie to go with it. Really? <laughs> I would have been. UKIP's Euro election success stunned the political establishment. Now Kilroy wants the party to become a force in British politics. Things are looking good. <laughs> it's a, oh, a, rain, a rainbow's got to be a good one. Kilroy sees a chance to start a new kind of politics based on truth and openness and UKIP's biggest financial backer agrees. He wants Kilroy made party leader. Would you want to lead the party? No. You don't want to become leader? No. All I'm concerned about is ensuring that we can govern ourselves and we can have our independence and our sovereignty back. And I'm only interested in making that case for and with and on behalf of the British people. And I don't need to be the leader of any political party to do that. Now, where have I heard that before? Leadership challenges in the old politics always begin with denials like that. The European Parliament is back in session and Kilroy returns to do battle with the evil empire. Oh, look at that. Now, do I want one of those for Zach or not? Do I? Is that kind of terribly disloyal? <laughs> I, you know what? Got to ask Jan. No. What? No. Merci. Can't buy it. But you could kick it around. <laughs> I mean, you could be, every time you kick it, you could kind of really put your heart in it, couldn't you? <laughs> You could we not don't play football <laughs> under the flag yet. No, we don't play football under the flag. It's quite right. See, Jan is absolutely, you know, spot on all the time. You can see why I keep her, can't you? <laughs> why I stick with her. Having anti-EU views here was never going to make Kilroy popular. The sniping began straight away. Creep. There were others who were delighted to have him on board. <laughs> well, part of music can go later on. <laughs> this is all rather militaristic, well, isn't it? Which, um, which, um, which I didn't think it would take him very long. <laughs> Bit of umpire music. Just what we expected, really. <laughs> Nigel Farage heads UKIP's MEPs. Apart from Tony Blair, I can't think of another British politician that's as easily recognised in the street as Kilroy, well, that's what they call him, Kilroy. They all know who he is, um, and he spent 18 years not just on the television, but actually reaching into their homes and talking to them about family issues, about things that really affect them. So he's made a massive difference, and I think he's, uh, he hasn't finished yet. He was right. Kilroy had only just begun. In just six weeks, he would accuse Nigel Farage of running the party like his personal plaything. Stop all this! <laughs> this I wanted to know is... whether you merit flowers! <laughs> this is not acceptable. How much does that cost my constituents in their tax? Are your constituents happy to pay for that, Nigel? Oh, I'm sure they're delighted. <laughs> yeah. He gets a million and a half pounds a year, an office here and another one in Brussels, and another one for his assistance in Brussels. He gets a car because he's the leader of the group. 
Yeah, that's right. Uh-huh, you that's see? Right. You that's thought right. I didn't know about it. He didn't know. He didn't know. I haven't used it. Yeah. No other member of the group knows. <laughs> but Robert knows. Because <laughs> Robert finds out everything. <laughs> oh, yeah, tell you, there's a lot more I know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. OK, you need to stop now. So much for open politics. The next day, it was clear that something was seriously wrong. Kilroy wasn't happy being filmed with his new colleagues. Yeah, it didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> Shh, yeah, stop now, stop now, stop now. Stop now. You've got to, you got to stop. Yeah. Go away, Emeka. I want to talk to Say you. Say hello, Robert. OK. Bye, Aaron. Anyway, thanks for coming on board. Um, and I think OK. Eventually, it became difficult to film anything at all. I was determined to find out what was going on, so I decided to stalk Kilroy in the corridors. Is he with you? No, I don't think so. No, you're sure? <laughs> Quiet. You're not following us all the way around here again. Aren't you bored with this? It's the same steps, the same garage, the same car. Different conversation. Throw your apple at him. I'll give you 10 quid if you can hit it right on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> you see that? He, he got very worried. Oh, okay, you're off. Eventually, my persistence paid off. I caught him off guard. There's a lot. Well, you should have been looking at the paper. It's all about the leadership. All this thing is all about the leadership. And something either big is happening or then it won't happen. Right. Like today, but all this, what's been happening here. So it's been very work. sensitive for me. Are you, are you, are you? Yeah. No, I was just. Thank you, Mr. He's talking to the press about people pushing him forward for the leadership. Do you have any opinions on that? Well, that was bound to happen, wasn't it? Bound to happen that a very big figure with huge media appeal comes in. Obviously, people were going to say, well, isn't it natural that Robert should become the leader? I mean, my feeling on that um, is that Roger Natman took this job on two years ago, and I can't think of many political leaders who've had a more successful tenure of, of office than Roger's had. So I think, I think that ball is very much in Roger's court. I mean, let's see what happens. There's a question of credibility, I think. What are the main challenges that you face? We've got to be credible. And that means we're policy-based, not personality-based. We've got to be credible as a major political party. That's my job. Policy-based, not personality-based. That's my job. The stage was set for a Kilroy special showdown. Hartlepool. A by-election has been called. Peter Manderson has just been appointed as Britain's EU Commissioner and resigned as an MP. It's the first real test of UKIP's wider appeal, and they've brought out their big guns. How are you? Are you going to stand up for Britain? Yeah! Right. Definitely. And you're going to... We want a new politics, don't we? We do! We want the truth, yes. transparency yeah. and honesty. Is anybody in charge yes. here? Yeah. Okay. Where are the people all seen that way? Hi there. The problem is, all the big guns seem to be firing in different directions. Mike Natras, deputy leader of the party, has his own distinctive views on the EU. I'm serious. Germans are the big losers here, but they don't care, because to them, the project is worthwhile. It's like an empire for them, spreading in all directions away from Germany into Hungary, into what they call the Sudetenland, Czechoslovakia, places like that. So it's cheaper, really, for them to do it this way than roll the tanks in. Do you think that the insinuation that the European Union is actually a cover for a fourth German right. I didn't say you, know, you made a remark insinuating that Germans yeah, would it, otherwise have got a cheap laughing. But uh, I don't okay. think a sophisticated one. Let me just tell you this. We belong to a group which now comprises forty MEPs from different from different nations. All of whom objecting against Europe by taking their salaries and all of their perks. I decided to give Kilroy a break. I headed for Brussels, where Godfrey Blum was about to call another press conference. Um, 
Hello there. Morning, morning, morning. How are we? Oh, we're very good. How about good. you? I'm terrible. UKIP's representative on the EU Women's Rights Committee is trying to improve his image. To help him, he's invited along a team he's been sponsoring for nearly 20 years. My great loves in life are beer, rugby and women. And it's embodied, it's totally embodied in Cambridge University. Uh, they were the natural first group. Uh, I have to say that I was... It was suggested that I was a misogynist, uh, a male chauvinist pig, and all that sort of nonsense. It just happens to be an amazing coincidence that my first guest at Cambridge University Women's Rugby Club. Godfrey's trying to explain uh, that his earlier comments about employing women of childbearing age were really a criticism of EU maternity regulations. But his humour soon began to get in the way of the message. Bits and pieces at the end. Uh, exactly what happened at the Women's Rights Committee this morning. I mean, you went there with the team, what actually happened? And what were they talking about? <laughs> right, we have no questions. Press conference over, and time for the ladies to receive a cheque. She's a bit shy, actually. You see? She's a bit shy. I'm now going to say something decibly incorrect. Isn't she bonny? I would like you to officially accept this. I'm not giving it. I'm not giving it to the director of Cambridge University Women's Rugby Club. She's far too old to be on camera. So I'm giving it to this beautiful girl instead. Uh, you, you can kiss me. <laughs> I think there was a message Godfrey was trying to give that um, he himself is not sexist in any way because of his sponsoring of your team. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, he has always been 100% behind us, always encouraged us yeah. in our working life, in our personal life, um, yeah. in, in learning, and he's always been behind and supported us. In answer to your question, you know, do you think Godfrey's sexist? Absolutely. Uh, I was absolutely disgusted last night at dinner when. Um, his, you know, comment to a colleague about one of the girls on the team was, isn't she the most delicious bimbet? It would be the second press conference in a row that Godfrey would hit the headlines for all the wrong reasons. So, Godfrey, you're not very good at press conferences, are you? Uh, <laughs> I don't think I'll answer that. What I was thinking was we'd go and say hello to the President of the Parliament. Yes. Who that uh, nice girl from Cambridge yes. sent the email to. Could you just write a letter? Just saying, look, I'm sorry you'd be put through this. Yeah. You know, nasty, nasty. I think just, just yeah. manners. We must mind our manners. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, that, but this is, I was just saying, that this is all about manners. Somebody mm -hmm. who's come out to a private party oh, at yeah. somebody else's expense all night till midnight, stayed all night, yeah, I, uh, then written a thank you letter for having a wonderful time, and then three weeks later, abusing the hospitality. Monstrous. Oh. Monstrous. Despite this, the party's fortunes continued to rise. Their conference that year was called the Celebration Conference. The Hartlepool by-election saw UKIP beat the Conservatives into fourth place. The political big time beckoned. But just when it couldn't get any better, Kilroy stopped towing the party line. We can't go on go AWOL today for another three months as we have for the last three months. Okay. Kilroy, so you've just given a rousing speech to the people behind you. Is that a bid for leadership? No. The following day, Kilroy appeared on the BBC's Frost on Sunday programme. Hi there, nice to see you again. Hi, this is my wife, Jan. Hello. Hi. How are you? Hi. I was here last week. Oh, you were? How's your mother? She's very well. She's is she still done. voting for oh, she's, me? Uh, she's still um, considering. <laughs> <laughs> are you a candidate, when the post becomes available, or now, as leader of your party? I would like to be leader of you. I would regard it as a privilege and an honour. Were you surprised? No, I was relieved. Did you expect me to say relieved. all that? Oh, were you relieved? Yeah. Why were you relieved? No, yeah, because it's all this humbug, isn't it? It's like you say about the Blair and Brown thing. Yeah. You know, there's been going on for a long time. Yeah. And, um... It's caused a lot of trouble, though. It's extremely difficult, because what I've got is responsibility. 
for the party and for its public pronouncements in effect, but without power. And that's an intolerable position to be in. I mean, I've been told for months and months and months by very senior members in the party that they want me to be the leader, they want me to take over. I am not going to lead an outfit in the last few weeks into a general election campaign. We have to start soon, now. Don't pull it because it might come off. You know it comes off, don't you? You've seen me when I take it all off and take my teeth out and I pull back all my suntan and become the real nice me. But Kilroy hadn't shown his true colours to the press or to me. He consistently denied he wanted to be leader. When did you change your mind about wanting to become leader? Change my mind? Yeah. Um, nobody's told me I've changed my mind. I didn't well, know I changed my mind. Well, my mind doesn't know it's changed you, you my mind. Say to, you did say um, publicly you, you, you didn't want to be leader, and you have since admitted to. Uh, oh no no no! I, 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 I've, I've referred to that. No, that, that's something at the moment. It was politics to say, and I regret saying it because I don't do what's politics. So you didn't lie, there. That wasn't a lie when you said you didn't want to run the party. That's what I said, I'm going back to that. Yeah, yeah, it's the one thing I said that I shouldn't have said at the time. Right. And I was trying to be helpful to the party and it was the wrong thing to do. I should have told the truth. The truth was now out, but it wasn't long before problems began to emerge. Today, the news is that UKIP's main sponsor has uh, pulled his money. And we need to know whether Robert Kill or Silk Fields in some part responsible for that because of the speech he made on Saturday calling for the death of the Tory party. Are you fine, Jan? Are you sure? <laughs> Paul Sykes was UKIP's biggest donor and had previously demanded that Kilroy was made leader of the party. That's him getting off the train. Oh, right, yeah. You've got to watch what he's saying. The announcement must have come as a blow to Kilroy's leadership ambitions. It seemed remarkably cheery, Robert, given events. Events? Events, dear boy? Events? You know me, I'm a very rich man. I can yeah. sign a cheque for all of this. Really? So you'd be willing to fund the campaign? <laughs> Would you be willing to fund the campaign? Oh, don't be silly. That would be like as if I was buying it, wouldn't it? I couldn't do that. Couldn't you get rid of this, bud? Have you, don't you pull rank or seniority? I mean, you, must be, you must be an editor or something, or a senior. But he's, what are you? You're just a mere he's producer, a aren't you? He's a, he's, a, he's a camera No, he's a pain in the arse. He's a camera carrier. It wasn't the only bad news that day. Party leader Roger Natman had threatened to discipline him. So you haven't spoken to Natman? No. And he hasn't spoken to me. Are you going out? You do. Up? Yeah, oh, I'll go come in here and talk to you while you're having it. Fill you in. Okay. Um, so I was having lunch with. What? He's still on. Oh, yeah. No, He's thank you. <laughs> thanks. Do you want to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah can on, you go on. out? Thanks. <laughs> Even, I thought this is from BBC. No. It doesn't matter, he yeah. doesn't like you being here. <laughs> um, no, he's going to have lunch I was banished to watch the programme in the studio. Thank you. And so much attention here in Britain on the fortunes of the UK Independence Party, which has lost its major financial backer, just as it was claiming it would be a serious force in British politics. The programme talked about the leadership, but it also challenged Kilroy on his article about Arabs. These are not comments that are designed to foster understanding or enlightenment. They were designed, they? They were designed to tell the truth. Who do you think is genocidal and mutilating women throughout the world and repressing them in Saudi Arabia, in Afghanistan? Kilroy's defence was fierce, but his facts were shaky. Afghans are not Arabs. It's the second time he's made this kind of error. His original article mistakenly called Iranians Arabs. Kilroy clearly didn't know who the Arabs were. It's not the sort of mistake a politician can afford to make. <laughs> See you. Bye, bye. Bye. Robert? Yeah? Um, just want to tell you, you mentioned the Afghans. Yeah? They're not Arabs. Well... <laughs> nobody is these days. <laughs> Thank you. A factual error. But does that make him a racist? How do you feel when people call you racist? Oh, um... 
sad because it's not true and there probably isn't uh, a less racist person than me in this country and in, in many ways I've probably done more for good race relations and for promoting the cause of people from ethnic minorities than most other people that I know, both as a politician, as a Labour MP, my record is there, it's very clear what I uh, voted for, what I championed, what I campaigned for. I was probably the very first pe person ever to raise the issue of the sus laws and the number, the disproportionate number of black people that were being stopped by the police. It's a really vile word. I can't think of much worse than probably the paedophile. And um, it's sad because it demeans political debate. Nine days after Kilroy had announced his leadership ambitions, he was summoned to a showdown meeting. Party leader Roger Knapman was threatening to discipline him unless he shut up. Nigel Farage was angry too, disputing Robert's claim that he had support from senior party That's members. Right. So it's going to be quite, uh, quite a lot to say today then. Well, we've got to clear the air, that's for certain. Because at the moment, at the moment we're being damaged. So two o'clock we're meeting in here, aren't we? Is that? Yeah. Are they the instructions that you've received? Yeah. 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 Uh, apparently I'm not allowed in to film it. Where, you're you not allowed in, you're absolutely right. But this is the new politics. This is about openness. This is because clearly there have been a difference in terms of accounts and people are going to want to know. Well, when the meeting happens. when the meeting's finished, you can spend as much time with us as you like. A small press scrum was forming and none of us were welcome. If you'd like to go away for an hour and have a cup of tea, that would be very much appreciated now, because there's going to be some private discussions. We won't miss anything if we do, will we? No, we won't miss anything. We weren't going anywhere. An hour and a half probably might be better. Are you nervous? What about? Well, they're all, all there to see you. Who? Give me peace. Is this the end of your following ambitions to become party leader? <laughs> Need a local difficulty. Is that all? Yeah. It looked bad. Surely someone would have to back down. Two hours later, they emerged. All these people lying in wait. <laughs> nice to see you. Sorry you've had such a long wait. It was therefore decided that discussions would continue in order to arrive at a position that would be in the long-term interests of the party. So you haven't resolved the dispute at all? No. Nope. We'll get that statement. For a change, Kilroy didn't seem to want to talk to the press. I'm really, I'm really sorry. I know you're doing your job. I'm doing mine too. Good night. Have a good night's sleep. It's positive ideas. Matman was talking, but he was unexpectedly conciliatory. We welcome that. We don't want him to shut up. We want him to speak out. Is it um, how you imagined it was going to be, the meeting? Or were you surprised by the outcome? Sorry? Was it, how, was it how you imagined it was going to be, the meeting? Yes, very similar, I think. Right. Yeah. You're not surprised by the, uh, the outcome? Well, it is, but the outcome is just precisely there. <laughs> Ameka, you're still there. What will I do without you? Round one, it seems, went to Kilroy. The statement said there were legitimate differences of opinion. Both sides also agreed to stop talking to the press while the party tried to accommodate Kilroy's demands. But the deal lasted barely a day. The newspapers reported Kilroy's leadership ambitions were over. One source said he needed to stop behaving like a small child. The next day, Kilroy seemed less than pleased to see me. Do you read the newspaper reports today? No. Up the meeting? No. Okay. Why? Someone was almost breaking against you. Well, that would be very much against the spirit of the, uh, the meeting. But uh, it doesn't, su not surprising, is it? <laughs> Back in Britain, both sides soon abandoned their agreement not to talk to the press and started openly briefing against each other. Thank you.
Now, what kind of stupid, awkward questions are you going to be asking me? We're trying to find an answer now by Robert Kilroy Silk. Is this about ego? No, it's not. It's about the direction of the party. I want the party to repay the trust that was put into it by the British people. I want you to become a serious political party, not to be a pressure group. They've cleverly twisted everything to see it as some great um, power-hungry push for leadership. It's not about titles or leadership. It's about the party actually moving forward and being credible. I've been enormously frustrated since the 13th of June. The very day after, I said, right, let's de start determining our policies. Let's draw up our manifesto for the next election. Let's appoint spokesman. So it is about let's you. Let's start making sure we are So it is about you. you, you Dom Questioner, and he's just got his list of questions. No. You're not following he the argument. Clipboard, blooming interview. In you know, we come from political parties. Brought up in the Labour Party, I was. With a, my father was a trade unionist. It's freedom. It's about debate. We're We're not in, one in and out. Been filmed in and out. Was it all right? Did you pass the Jan test, Robert? Did he pass the Jan test? Yes. Well, I just said he did all right, and she didn't kind of look at me all kind of glum and miserable and. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I wondered what Jan would have made of this performance. Following an appearance on ITV's The Sunday Program, Kilroy would make some unguarded comments that suggested another reason why he needed to take control of the party. Yeah, I didn't know what I joined. <laughs> <laughs> what has been irritating, I've been defending some of the right wing fascists. Huh? I'm sure. I'm I'm sure. sure. I've been saying, no, they're not, no, no. Who was Kilroy talking about? I got a clue when he bumped into an MEP from a Christian party working with UKIP. They're not fascist, but have controversial views. Are you with us at the Woolwich? Excuse me? No, you're not with us, are you? <laughs> Which, which what nationality are you? Polish. Polish. What, in the League of Polish Families? Yes. Oh. Oh. The right-wingers. The anti-women. That's yeah. not true. <laughs> Absolutely not true. <laughs> You think homosexuality is a sin? Yes. Does your group think that? Yes. All of them think the same. Absolutely. They respect the persons. Absolutely. But homosexuality is a sin. Yes. That's our faith. There you go. Okay. See? Yeah. Oh, that's what the, that's that's who the we people were. you've that's been working with. We're... I haven't. Are you happy no. with that? No, I wasn't happy. I spoke against it vehemently when they first suggested it, as did Jan. It was clearly the end of Kilroy's love affair with UKIP. Now, his fire would no longer just be directed at the EU, but against his own party. It's not going to be an amicable divorce, is it? Uh, sometimes people make things difficult, don't they? Are you trying to stir up trouble as well? You see, you're as bad as a tabloid. How am I reporter. trying to stir up trouble? I'm, I'm trying to keep up. Questions I, don't, I, I find difficult to answer. There's always trouble. Hey. When you've just fallen out with your current party leader, who better to bump into than the one you fell out with 20 years ago? Oh, hello, Mr. Kilroy. How are you? Robert, how are you? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Oh, no, you're Good God, Jack. What are you doing here? More to the point. I thought you were going to give Neil back. Don't start that. No, no, no. Don't start that. I want to talk to Neil privately. I don't want all this. I want to kind of, you know, give him your joke. No, 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 no. Ask him to fuck. Yeah, we should have done it. Absolutely. Well, if I were you, Robert, I need some strategic advice. I wouldn't start from here. I, I wish I could speak to you. Oh, don't you think we think that? Oh, okay. Nice to meet you. Happy landings. Advice was sorely needed. Nigel Farage was preparing UKIP's counter-strike, a vote to throw Kilroy out of the MEP's group. This is fermenting discontent within the party, which is not helpful. So we sent Robert a letter, a plight letter, and the demand was to get in line. So what's happening? What's happening is you see what's happening. I've just learned from the press. I hear from the newspapers, I now hear from television, that the uh, whip is being withdrawn uh, from me tomorrow for speaking my mind, um, which is bizarre. How are you? I'm all right. Glad to be back? Of always glad to be back. Good. It's lovely here. Good. It's, a, it's, it's all soul, isn't it? Any further developments on the leadership thing? There are no developments on anything. I'm looking for people to speak on 24 different television and radio programmes on the subject of... Immigration. Really? Oh, I have Hello. Yes, I have a telly. Um, just to let you know, if you're looking for people to appear on telly, Robert's over there. Yes, right. yes, 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 I know. Okay. 
Are you doing a programme for him? I know I've asked that before. No, not for He's him. Not We're doing a programme about him and about you, Kim. Yeah, OK. Right. In the end, there weren't enough MEPs willing to support throwing Kilroy out, but rumour had it that he'd already walked away. It appears, ahead of our meeting, he's voluntarily uh, taken the whip away from himself. I don't have to defend my character anymore, do I? Saying we're, we're going to be like the cheaters, able to fight ourselves out of the Soviet Union days after that school. Where does this leave the party? It leaves the party slightly weakened. Of course it does. I mean, has he left the party or is I he withdrawing his whip from, from the European group? I, I really don't know, because <laughs> he hasn't told me. You, know, you can't believe what I've had to do then on television. He's been there when I had to defend all of those on French television. No, Ambrose rang me up and said that you'd voluntarily withdrawn the whip. No, I am. Um, is that right or is that wrong? Don't tell people lies, I You told him anything. You know, most of the trouble. Well, what is the situation? Most, most of the trouble has been caused by you. You have not I, told I, the I, I have yet. not left. I'm not talking to you. I have <laughs> not left the party. All right. So I didn't say you had. Yeah. That's you not what the financial times say. I didn't say you had. Robert, talking to me. Yeah, this is not what the what financial times say. Well, you believe everything you read in the newspaper. No, well, that works. That works. That works. Right, Robert. Let's be civilized about it. What? But don't tell us. That's what I haven't told them. I won't tell them. Why are they ringing me authoritatively saying? Is that true? That's what, where'd you get this from? Nigel no, 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 no. Just told us that. Well, no, 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 no. You're boring a lot of people. I said, hang, hang I'm on, not anybody. Else. Else. No, we're not having I a meeting with them. Nigel, don't Nigel, 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 Nigel. Nigel, 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 I have everybody. Yeah. Don't play games, Robert. Come on. Nigel, everybody I've had, I've had, I've had, I've had, I've had two people. Everybody, yeah. everybody has told uh, me. Dan, no. I'm sorry, but we're that, that, you, that you are voting to, this afternoon to just close the door. Come yes, on. The door. Don't want to discuss it. Wait, say excuse me, and I'll move. Don't push it against me. Everybody's told me. Right. Well, now you're following me back, and the lift won't come for seven minutes, and that's going to be very awkward. This can't be easy for you. Well, it's not difficult. I mean, I think you're seeing for yourself that um, uh, that you can't work with some people as easily as with others. Why don't you come into the room if you want to listen? When you don't I listen at the door, not come in. When did you ask me if I don't, back don't put your ear to the door? Do you want a glass so you can hear better? Of course it is. Bye-bye. Get out! The brake's on, the brake is on. Come on, Charlie. <laughs> it's the annual gathering of the Kilroy clan for a combined Halloween and Guy Fawkes party. Well done, and again, hard. It's also time for a break, though politics is never far away. and we want that, not to be dictated to and told what we've got to have. So I think proper time to do is... <laughs> there you are, Rebecca, see? <laughs> Both were like a true cousin. Oh, did you vote? I did. There you are. But it wasn't Who did you vote kid. for? I voted for... What's his name? Nigel. Oh, yeah. Nigel for us. <laughs> After all the infighting, Kilroy has decided to continue his campaign to take the leadership from Natman and undermine the man he believes is the real power broker in the party, Nigel Farage. The members have to decide whether they want to take charge of their party. For three months, now four, I kept quiet about what I regarded as irresponsibility, the political irresponsibility that bordered on criminality. It seems like you're upsetting a lot of people. Who's next? That's When's it going to end? That's the kind of provocative question I'd be really stupid to answer, isn't it? The answer to that question would come on my next visit to Strasbourg. While one great symbol of European cooperation was celebrating its birthday, the EU Parliament was preparing to vote in a new commission.
Kilroy chose this moment to highlight his concerns about the new commissioners. Mr. President, that shower down there purports to be the government of Europe. That's the best you can do. That's the cream. That's the elite. They're a joke. They are a gaggle of rejects, failures, has-beens, no marks, liars, dodgy characters, communists, epitomised, Mr. President, by the British Commissioner Mandelson. And he and that lot down there are now going to make the laws for my country on immigration, on asylum, on foreign policy, on defence? I don't think so. These are... Oh, I see the gravel's going down very quickly when I'm speaking, yeah. Mr. President. My country deserves yeah. better. Yeah. And it will get better. Isn't she... Yes, yes. Mr. Kilroy, you should be happy. You should be very happy that I didn't interrupt you during your speech because, quite frankly, nobody needs to listen to slander and insults, not even from Mr. Kilroy Silk from the UK. Truth! The truth! The dearly truth! A week later, the muck really hit the tan when Kilroy had slurry thrown over him by a man who claimed he had insulted Islam. The police wanted his suit as evidence. And that is just the muck where it, was, it felt, oh, it's drenched right through. I could feel it. Mm -hmm. What does it smell like? <laughs> it smelled like Not nice. Is that the truth? And my heart's like this. Pounding. And I could feel my face glowing. Yeah. And it must have been the adrenaline or whatever. Yeah. And I'm sitting there and the first question is going, and I'm not listening to a word they're saying. Yeah. I'm hopeful that we'll be arresting the offender very short period of time and I'll keep you updated with anything else. Kilroy would use the assault to make a political point. And the people who assaulted me on Friday are no different from the people that label you and me as xenophobes, or as little Englanders, or as extremists, because they're using precisely the same tactics. It's Christmas in Strasbourg, and I'm here to see Kilroy for the last time. The lights and decorations are all up, but Christmas spirit is a little thin on the ground. There is no way I could continue to be a member of that party and certainly not to serve under an incompetent and absent leadership. Any messages for him? Well, I mean, it's, I mean the main message is simple, isn't it? it? It's very personal ambition. Get back in the team and let's get on with the job. Any uh, final thoughts for Robert? Any? I'm supremely indifferent to him. Would you change what you did in the last year with relation to you if you were able to do it again? If I, sp if I spent, started doing that, no, I'd be changing something I did every... Except Jan. Except Jan. It's the only thing I never, ever regret doing was let, letting Jan marry me. <laughs> Giving her permission. <laughs> Taking her under my wing and looking after her, and that's the only thing. I, th I think I did a good thing for Jan. Did I? <laughs> Next week, BBC Three offers an insight into the lives of the young and dispossessed people of rural Britain. That's Country Strife, Monday evening at nine.